Make sure to book your next fishing trip in Louisiana with a member of the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. Visit lasaltwater.com today. Late spring is one of my favorite times of year to go fishing in southeast Louisiana. That's because big, gigantic speckled trout move to the platforms in Brenton Sound. And today we've got a perfect day to go fishing. Captain Jace Olibear with Off The Grid Charters is going to take us to the Holy Cross Rig and the Central Rig in Brenton Sound. And I promise we're going to catch some monster speckled trout, so let's go fishing. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Delta Marina in Empire, Louisiana, featuring newly renovated cabins on the water, a ship store for all of your tackle and food and drink, live shrimp, gas and diesel, a fish cleaning station, and the Ponderosa Grill and Oyster Bar serving South Louisiana cuisine Thursday through Sunday. Visit us online at thedeltamarina.com. Jason, tell you, to me, there's nothing more exciting in the morning. I don't know what it is about Campos Marina, but it's outside and it's... Uh, over a hundred years old, there's no big fancy stuff, but all the boats show up, dark as it can be, 4, 4.30 in the morning, everybody getting bait, weather perfect. There's just something about getting to that marina in the morning, seeing everybody getting bait and seeing that the weather's perfect that just gets you fired up about going fishing. 100%, Kevin. Getting up getting up, and getting ready to go fishing in the morning, seeing everybody so excited and Robbie over there, ready to give you your bait. And Everybody over there, the whole atmosphere. Yeah. Just perfect. You have a pretty good idea about uh, what you wanted to do today and where you wanted to start. And uh, obviously people that will recognize it. I mean, there's no secret yeah. we're at a rig called Holy Cross. What is it about that rig that made you want to come make that the first stop today? Holy Cross is just a rig I've always fished out there. It's one of my favorites. It's got a shell pad all around it on the bottom. Just caught some really big fish there in the past. and. It's a very good, very good place to fish this time of year when, when conditions are right. And conditions are definitely right right now. And it's I think the rigs as you get out there are what, 13, 14 feet of water? Yeah, roughly 10 to 15 foot of water out there. And one of the things that we're fortunate with today is we've kind of had a slack tide the last few days. And for inshore fishing, that's not a very good thing. But for fishing these rigs, I've been out there before where it's almost like you need a boat anchor to hold bottom. So it was perfect yeah. with the lack of tide. Oh yeah, we had the perfect little, it wasn't really moving too hard. It was barely trickling and it created the perfect amount of movement for us to be able to get our baits down there and fish. If it's ripping too hard, it definitely makes it a challenge to fish out there. You know, one of the things that's amazing to me is that yesterday you had some friends go out to that rig and they were the only ones out there. Oh, yeah and they fished plastic the entire time and caught all their fish on plastic. Mm -hmm. We go out there today, there's two boats already set up fishing live bait. And let me tell you, those fish want that live shrimp. Oh yeah, they wouldn't touch the plastic. We caught a couple with it at first and then had to switch to the live shrimp to really get them going. Once that lot, once they, once somebody's at the rig at, at a spot out there this time of year and they got that live shrimp in the water, them trout, they get so keyed in on that live shrimp, they oh, won't Jay's touch the glass. Oh, I got them. Good trout. Nice. Pretty, 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 pretty. Wild bait time, huh? Oh, yeah. Switched over to that shrimp. Try to make them eat. Well, it's, we got all these boats around us and they got, they're fishing with bait and they've got to fish pretty much all around them, so they're doing good. We've just got to get an area where we can get some. But uh, we got the live shrimp, Carolina rigged on the bottom, and you know we started to get some fish going, and uh, those fish are nice, man. Oh yeah, this time of year, when you can catch some big ones out there. What you got, bud? Give me another fish. Another one? Oh, yes. Ooh, you got something full in there, buddy. Oh yeah, it's a trout, it's a good one. Oh, a that's trout. a Spanish. No, that's oh, a trout. That's a nice trout. It's a Spanish trout. It's a Spanish trout. <laughs> Nice. I might, I might want to go back to the bait, huh? I told you, just be a little patient. 
You figure are you I'm saying? Are you saying that I'm not patient? patient enough? No. I'm older than you. I don't have that much time left in this world, son. You have plenty of time to be patient. I'm an oh, old man. Patience I, is key. I get stuff from AARP. <laughs> you get stuff from Disneyland. <laughs> Learning about patience from a 21-year-old. Hey, I'm not 21 yet. Oh, that's right, you're not. I was just trying to give you credit. Next month. Can't even go to a rated R movie with you. Make sure to book your next fishing trip in Louisiana with a member of the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. Visit lasaltwater.com today. The artificial. I can remember us both fishing plastic and I'm casting and retrieving and I'm catching nice speckled trout on the cast and retrieve method. You're basically bouncing off the bottom and we, you know, it wasn't as good as the live, but oh, yeah. certainly uh, both methods work really well. Oh yeah, they definitely both work. You kind of got to throw and figure it out. As you know, Kevin, it's all about kind of on the angle you're throwing at, really. You got to figure them out each day. One day they might be way off the rig. One day they might be up in the rig is, you know, certain rig, every rig is different. You got to kind of trial and error, really figure it out to key in on what the fish want that day. What do I have? A foul hook Spanish mackerel. A foul hook Spanish mackerel. Ooh. Awesome. Now this is, all right, this is one of my, Chase, this is one of my all time best. <laughs> this is one of my all time best catch right here. This is it right here. You want to say something that takes skill? Oh yeah. Catching a Spanish mackerel in the ass. In the tip. Mm. Awesome. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. Keep them. I've done, I've done a lot of stupid things in my life, but that's about as good as it gets right there. Keep them, it's a good sashimi. Where you eat the sashimi. I will, I will tonight. Well good, you got it. I'm glad I can catch Spanish mackerel in the ass so you can have sashimi. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. These things will bite the hell out of you too. We were watching these other boats and the way they were casting and a lot of times it it helps. When, when other boats are catching fish, I think a lot of people want to get on top of them yeah. and do that. That's not the right thing, Jason. No. The thing to do is to see like, okay, what are they doing? We're fishing live bait, they're fishing live bait. What are they doing that they're catching fish and why are we not catching as many? and we figured out it was the angle. And I remember oh, yeah. you move the trolling motor and then we get on this angle and then you start throwing that bait and you catch three, four of them in a row, yeah. just really good. And it was because you changed the angle. Oh yeah, 100%. When you're fishing out there like that and if you see somebody else catching fish, you watch what they're doing, how they're presenting their bait, like with the current, you gotta kind of play the current on those rigs out there, how they're presenting their bait and working their bait with the current and how they're positioning their boat on the rig. And nine times out of 10, you can move to another rig and replicate the exact same thing. But it's funny when you do this, it's it's all, I mean, you would think that everybody out here would be just, we'd be just catching them as fast as everybody else. But as many fish as they have out here, and we've probably seen a hundred fish caught. If you're not throwing on the right angle. Mine looks a little bigger. You're not, they're all pretty fish, son. You'll learn that. You know, another thing is, is there were three of us out there today on that one rig and you use your trolling motor and you stay away oh, yeah. and nobody's bite got messed up or yeah. anything like that everybody was able to fish and and do that but you know one of the things i find you know you make the move to where you start catching some of those on live shrimp and a lot of people would think and, and i would think the same thing with artificial that's one thing but throwing a live shrimp on a carolina rig you wouldn't think that the angle would make that much of a difference, no. but it does for it some does. reason. I don't understand it. It does. It ha it's got to have. I think it has something to do with the way the bait, drip, way the right natural bait that's already out there is drifting around the rig or coming around one of them pilings with the current, and the way your bait going exactly the same with that. And fish can be very picky sometimes, very picky sometimes, especially when it's completely. If you notice, when they were really picky was when it was completely still out there this morning. When we first got out there, there wasn't a lick of wind. Once you get a little bit of wind and a little, not too much of a chop, but a little little something on the water, it kind of a little more comfortable to feed in than when it's completely still out there. We catch some fish, 
one of the boats moves, another boat moves in, and to where one of the other boats was, they start catching some fish. So we decide to troll around the rig and then we start catching a few fish. And it's one of those situations, it's always tough. I know for any fisherman, should I stay or should I go? Because there were enough fish there to keep us interested and there were nice fish. There were people catching fish on live bait. We were out of live bait, but sometimes it's hard to leave fish. So we just kind of kept moving around and grinding and grinding it out and catching a few fish. Yeah, we kept moving around that rig and then I finally decided, I was like, it's time to make a move. On a day, when you get a pretty day with perfect conditions like today, on a, when everything, all the stars are aligned, you're gonna be able to find some fish in more than one place. So that's what we did. Let's Go Fishing is brought to you by Ralph Sellers Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Gonzales, Louisiana's number one Ram dealer. We decided to make the run to Big Central, which is a, which is a outstanding place to fish. Everybody knows where it is. Now, the problem with Big Central is it's not a really good rig to fish for TB no. because the compressors on there are running 24 seven and you can't hear. So I'm kind of thinking in the back of my mind, we're gonna catch a few fish here, but, but they're gonna be like on a live bait bite again. They're gonna want live bait. That's, that's what they're gonna want. Mm -hmm. And I throw out and I'm doing my cast and retrieve thing. And I feel this thump. I mean, when I'm, dude, I tell you it's a thump. Oh, yeah. It's a thump. You're not even on the front of the boat. I don't know if you're on the front oh, of the no. boat, but this thing thumps. I don't know what it is. I think it may be a redfish. And when I see that trout come up, I'm like, oh my God. And you got pretty excited too. Oh, it didn't yeah. take you very long to go get a rod. No, definitely didn't. When you pull up at a rig out there like that and you catch one big one like that on plastic, you know there's a few more around, so. So then you catch one and we, we, we catch a couple of doubles out there and the fish are just, huge i mean i mean i mean really 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 big and it, it was kind of like though we caught them right there and then they quit it was like they the quit. fish were almost like they were essentially going in a school and yeah. just swimming around oh 100 percent. i find over there at central if, unless you're really on a big school of fish they kind of move around the rig and unless you got them fired up with some live bait or they're really fired up you got to keep them following them around the rig, moving. I like fishing up in the rig, throwing up in the pilings. I find that's where the bigger fish are. So. Well, that's what we did. So we end up just trolling around the rig and we go kind of to the other side of where we were casting. And then we start getting on these fish, dude. And it was, <laughs> I'm telling you, it was unbelievable. I haven't caught fish. It's been so long since I've caught that quality of fish consecutively on on cast man we were catching three four pound fish oh yeah there was there's some solid fish out there right now 100 percent. there's a some very serious fish out there at central as you know tell yeah. about the one you lost oh well we're gonna get to that yeah. right? we're, we're gonna get to that but yeah it was it, it's amazing just the way that those fish hit and you were catching and again there's 12 15 feet of water you're bouncing off the bottom catching them and i'm basically fishing five feet because you could see my fish as soon as I would as soon as I would say I got one my fish is on top of the water yeah. yours is kind of working a little yeah. bit more under the water it's taking a while so those fish were kind of all over the water column yeah. weren't they they were definitely scattered throughout the water column I was getting I had a couple of bites where they hit it literally a couple feet from the boat so but you know Jason we get out this morning we kind of threw a whole bunch of a different color soft plastics out there and we caught a couple of fish but then you found the bait that really was the ticket. And this is a bait that you really catch a lot of fish on out here. Yeah, this is a brand new bait by Matrix Shad. It's a lime, lime light. It's called Lime Light. It's brand new, it comes in a purple bag by Matrix Shad. And that's been, a, that's been the color the past couple, ever since they came out with it and I got a bag of them. That's, that's, been, the color, that's been the hot bait out there for me on my boat. Any particular reason you think why that, that that greenish color has been so popular? I don't know. It's kind of got a tint to it, like a darker tint to it, kind of almost like a croaker has. And a, when they're spawning out there like that, they're really keyed in on croakers and bigger baits. Right. And you know, I started fishing with the Limbo Slice, and that one is kind of similar to the one you were fishing with. So it looks like 
we kind of got that color pattern right, I mean, didn't we? Definitely, definitely a correlation between them two colors. Today's Tackle Box is brought to you by the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. Book your adventure today. All right, our hot bait for today was the Matrix Triple Laminate Shad. This bait was really, really good. This was the color that worked exceptionally well when we were fishing the soft plastics today on a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce death grip jig head. Akuma rods and reels, the Komodo bait casting reel, DTR, both spinning and bait casting reels. This is the setup that we use right here for the live shrimp, and we call it a Carolina rig if you don't know. We've got the egg sinker, which is up here, and then we've got about a two foot leader, fluorocarbon leader, 20 pound test with a kale hook tied to the end, and that's essentially the live bait leader for the rigs. It's real easy fishing. Make sure you bring plenty of it though, because there's a lot of toothy critters out there, and there's a lot of catfish and things that are gonna take your bait, so you're gonna lose terminal tackle, and lots of live shrimp as the summer goes on and you fish out here. Great fishing shirts to wear and apparel. Hey, check it out and have it outdoors. And that's basically all we did to be successful today here in Shell Beach, Louisiana. Kevin, you know what I think is one of the highlights of the day? It's when you lost that trout. A highlight? Highlight, highlight of the day. That was one of the biggest trout I've seen. I in quite some time. I, you know, we caught a five yeah. out there. And when that fish hit, I, it was a thump. And for a second, I thought it was red. And then it started shaking its head. And then I saw it. And, you know, we both said that that fish was Every eight pounds. And I, there's no doubt in my yeah. mind that that fish was eight pounds. And it was funny because yeah. you were telling me right before that, you said, I want to hook one of these eight pounders because I know there's some eight pound fish at this rig. Oh yeah, and literally five minutes after I said that, you hooked one and it was, it was a beast, so. That was, it, it was it was the one that got away, but you know, that's one thing about these rigs, you know, the big fish we're catching, they're, I mean, you, you have a chance oh, yeah. anytime you go out there to fish, to catch one of these giant. big fish. And one of my favorite times was when we're at Central and you know, the bite was kind of coming and going, but we catch that double. Oh, yeah. it, that was amazing. When you have a double of three and a half pound trout on, yeah. on plastic, oh, yeah. that was incredible doing that. Oh, yeah. And I can remember, I get hooked up and I got one and then I turn back and you say double. And I was like, oh man, it doesn't get any better than this. That happened multiple times and it was pretty exciting. I even asked you if you were excited because you didn't really look too excited. Well, I was excited. I was, little bit I was a little bit a little bit bummed that I lost my fish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was a little bit bummed because, you know, we didn't lose it. That, that's the funny part about it. A lot of times when you hook fish and then, you know, we're getting the fish up and we're letting them play in the GoPro and do stuff like that. We had some big fish. Oh, yeah. Never lost any of them. No, I know. But that one big one, uh, it just, Gone. he got in that, he, when, what he did was there was that piling that was over there and he kind of, it, I, he didn't wrap around the pylon, but there's so many barnacles on those pylons. It's easy to cut, especially, that's one big thing I could say for people is, if you really want to catch a big fish, be sure to, after a few fish, retie your knots and make sure there's no frays in your line. That's definitely 100% what caused that, not retying after catching a few fish with them trout, they got those teeth and they'll nick the line up, even that fluorocarbon, so it don't hurt to just retie if you don't want to get a, uh, Get your feelings hurt when you hook a big one and he nicks the pile and again. You know, it, I think we get spoiled, yeah. but 100%. a lot of people to catch the fish that we caught today, a lot of people, that would be the absolute trip of a lifetime. Oh yeah. And for us, we take just it another for granted. Fishing, just yeah. another fishing trip. We take it for granted. I think about that all the time, how much I take that for granted, catching a speckled trout of that size. Get, get some people from out of town, they'd be, be take 3,000 pictures with that one fish and I, I love it. I love to see people excited about fish like that. I I get excited too. You get excited too. Well today was one of those days that uh, I'm not gonna forget anytime soon. A because we had a great fishing trip but B because it was gonna be the trip where the one that got away. I'm not gonna forget that one. Jace you're gonna remind me of that. Jace Oldberry is a almost 21 years old. Uh, the guy is as knowledgeable as it can be. He loves to fish. 
So whether you want to do spin fishing or you want to come out here to Premier Bow Fishing and do a bow fishing trip, give Jace a call. You'll have a great time with him, I promise. Uh, Man, I had a lot of fun, buddy. Yes, I, sir. It was a uh, pleasure. It was a blast. I can't wait to do it again. We, have, yeah. we, I mean, and Jace is out there. We need to go do this. We need to go do that. So you're gonna see him again. We, he wants to go weight fish. He probably wants to go. I don't know what else. We, you may even want to go tuna fishing in Lake Barn. Who knows? Oh yeah. But something like that. He is just a great fisherman. Robbie Campo, Campos Marina. Thank you for the accommodations. Thanks for the live bait and everything you do for us. And to all the folks of St. Bernard Parish, come down here and see everything we have to offer here. We have great lodging. We have great local restaurants. We're 30 minutes from New Orleans. Visit stbernard.com. Great place to fish. And thank you so much for watching. For producer Joey Bordelon and Captain Jason Olibear, I'm Kevin Ford. We'll see you next time. Let's go fishing. So long, everyone.